And we're welcoming the great Don Fisher, the voice of the Indiana Hoosiers. Don, thank you so much, as always, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Jim. Absolutely, as always, man. Uh, not a great weekend for Indiana sports. The Colts couldn't have looked any worse if they tried. It looked like they tried to lose that game yesterday. I'm like, how in the world are you all letting these passes go by? It wasn't just the last one, but before that. And then, of course, the Indiana Hoosiers men's basketball team uh, playing about as good a defense as the Colts right now. Um, not looking good for the Hoosiers. Well, I, I, I've talked about this uh, on several shows this morning. Um, look, Indiana's lost five games this year. Now, granted, their first loss to Rutgers was not an offensive showpiece. But in these other four games that they've lost, they have given up 84 points twice, 87 and 91. If you give up that kind of number to any team, you're probably not going to win that ball game. And that is the problem right now with this Indiana ball club. It's 90% of it's on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, they are not playing with that intensity level, with the toughness level, the things we've talked about before um, with every basketball team at Indiana over the last six years or so. Uh, we've got a ball club that mentally, toughness-wise, is just not good enough at this point. And that all that comes from the players. The coaches can talk about this stuff until ad nauseum, and there's just no way if you don't play with the toughness of the other team and match that or better it, you're not going to beat them. And Indiana's finding that out the hard way. Yeah, and the toughness was something we had talked about more than once pr prior, but it, it was, there were games where they were able to just – do enough to get by, or it really showed itself. And I, I was surprised to see this kind of continue, thought that they would just take it upon themselves to see that, to feel those results and and know that they have to play harder, play tougher. And yet it seems game in, game out, we talked to Mike after the game, and he's like, well, he, you got to try harder. You got to play harder. I'm like, why is that still being said this late into people's careers and this late into a season? I, it's, it's befuddling. Well, from my perspective, um, and this, you know, look, I'm not around. I mean, I see it through practices, those kind of things. So I, I do get a chance to watch and those kind. And you watch practice, and these guys practice hard. They really do. Um, and they work their tails off. But it's a mindset. It's, it's how you approach a game. And if you go into um, any basketball game, uh, if you go out there in the warm-up line and all that kind of stuff and you're laying it up and you're kind of casual and loosey-goosey and all that kind of thing, um, I, it doesn't look to me like that's focus. It doesn't look to me like, hey, we're getting ready to play a basketball game. We know this is going to be a challenge and we've got to come out and play our best. I, I don't think these guys are looking at it that way. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that I'm right about this. It's just what it's an appearance thing, if you know what I'm saying. And I've always watched uh, when when Greg Con Greg Oden and Mike Conley were playing for Ohio State. I watched those guys in their warm up prior to the ball game. There was never a smile. There was never uh, conversations being had or jacking around or having fun. They were going through the process. And if you watched Indiana basketball players in years gone by, uh, and again, we're going back a long way now to the Bob Knight era, but when they were out there, they were ready to play basketball. You knew that they were focused. I'm not saying that 100% of the time that they had the right mindset going into games, but 98% of the time they did. And I'm talking 27 years that I watched Bob Knight teams play. And there was a focus. There was a mentality that you knew going in that you were going to face an Indiana team that was going to play your, your butt off, uh, and they were going to give themselves the best chance to win. And I'm not seeing that with this ball club. And, and that's, again, I'm, I'm just a guy that I don't know an X from an O, and I've said that many times. I'm not a coach. Uh, my job is to watch and see what I see and be objective about it. And that's that's what I see. I, I see – I'm not saying these guys are um, not ready to play, 
but they do not go into it with that intensity level, that focus that I think you have to have, especially in the Big Ten, because this league, there's no weak sister in this league. You've got some of the best coaches in the country coaching against you, and they know how to take things away. They know how to make things tough on you. They will beat your brains in if you're not ready to play these ball games. And what are we seeing? We're seeing an Indiana team that's predicted by all the so-called media experts out there. This team's going to win a Big Ten championship or has a great chance to win a Big Ten championship. Well, right now, they're in the same spot they've been in at the end of seasons. Again, nobody recognizes this or talks about it. Indiana hasn't finished any higher than ninth in this Big Ten conference in six years. So think about it. I mean, this team has so far to go from a mental standpoint. In my opinion, uh, that's where Mike has got to just take control of this thing and say, look, guys, we're not getting it done with this kind of mindset. We're going to change your mindset. If you're not going to change it, oh, you sit by me. Yeah, it's, it's setting the tone. I agree with you, Don. It, you look at the beginning of games, and they're not setting a tone. And that's when you do it to the other team. At least it's – well. Uh, back when I played, I thought you, you tried to set the tone. Right, and 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 they did set the tone against Iowa. Um, I mean, they went out and they were playing tougher than nails at the defensive end of the floor, and of course, offensively, whatever uh, new things, the new sets, uh, the new style, whatever offensively Mike Woodson put in there, because he talked about the fact that they did put in a lot of new stuff in that 13-day period leading up to the Iowa game. Well, all that stuff worked tremendously. Um, it, it worked great in the first half. They got a 21-point lead with over 13 minutes to go in the first half. And that's how well they were playing offensively. But then it started to slide a little bit. The defense wasn't near as intense. Uh, and the next thing you know, it's a 10-point game at halftime. Indiana scores 50. Iowa scores 40. <laughs> well, <laughs> that tells you right there, whatever level of intensity they had after 10 minutes of play, it changed pretty dramatically in the final 10 minutes. And, of course, race went out with four and a half minutes to go, and that was a big factor as well. So you have to think, look, there is no question Xavier Johnson being out, uh, Race Thompson being out, that factors into it. But that's not that doesn't factor into your mindset it, it, from the standpoint of being a tough-minded basketball team. And that's where this whole thing has got to change. It really does. Yeah, and the defense has been not – it has not been in what it was last year, this year, and they seem to be more talented this year. And um, I, we don't know what the reasons are, and, and we're not really getting answers. I'll be honest with you, because that race and the, the 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 loss of Race Thompson and Xavier was used yesterday. Which losing your best on ball defender is certainly going to hurt you, and Xavier Johnson. But it wasn't there. Even before that, you could tell it just wasn't quite there. And then, of course, losing those guys exacerbates that greatly. Sure. There's no question. You you can go back and look at the Xavier game, at the Xavier game, and at the North Carolina game. Indiana came out with their hair on fire in both those games, and they played that way throughout. Um, and that's the way you have to approach it. If you don't approach it every game that way, you're, you're going to have a chance of getting beat no matter what your talent level is uh, against the other team. Now, there's nobody that's not capable of beating you in this league. It's that simple. And it's it's got to change. It really has to change. And it's, like I said before, it's more mental than it is physical. They have enough talent to beat people. Uh, and they've proven that. But they have not had the mentality on a consistent level to do that, and that's where it's got to change. Well, and they head uh, to a place on this week that back in the day, or I don't know if it was ever easy, but uh, you at least have thought, okay, well, we're not going to Michigan. We're not going to Michigan State. Well, that's not the case anymore because Penn State, they're sick and tired, just like Rutgers, sick and tired of being the butt of basketball jokes in the Big Ten, and right. they're like, man, they smell blood in the water, and they're coming. Yep, and they're the team that Indiana will face on Wednesday night this week after losing a tough one to Purdue yesterday. Um, and they played Purdue tough. I mean, they gave Purdue a battle. And and despite the fact that they got beat, 
Micah Shrewsbury has done a terrific job of getting his guys to understand uh, we're going to play with a chip on our shoulder from now on for as long as I'm here as the coach. We're playing with a chip on our shoulder. Uh, we're going to turn this program around, and it's going to take some toughness and some and some guys that are willing to do what we ask them to do to get it done. And those kids have bought in, and they're winning. And they sure, they got beat yesterday by a Purdue team that's been ranked number one and probably won't be after this week uh, after their loss. But it's a Purdue team that is going to be now right down to the wire. They they look like the best team of the conference. I'm not. I, one thing I've learned, Don, is I'm not saying the rest at least until March on who I think the Big Ten favorite is because no. it has switched too damn many times. And and there's too many teams like Ohio State that are just. You know, I know that and Purdue squeaked a win out there, which was huge. But there's just too many teams like that that I'm like, oh man, I'm not counting anybody out. Well, and, and here's the thing, and, and it sounds like we're down on this Indiana basketball team totally, and I'm not. Uh, I really am not because we talked about the depth that they had at the beginning of the season through November and early December um, before they started having some of these injury issues. But they had a lot of depth. But the depth and the guys that are coming, are coming off the bench, um, obviously, Trey Galloway is, is – there are so many things I want to talk about here today, but, but, and I don't want to point out individuals very much at all. Uh, I will say this Galloway gives you a, a really, a, a guy off the bench that really gives you a spark. I don't think there's much question about that. His defensive play is terrific. His offensive play has been too, for the most part, but he won't shoot or he hasn't shot it. I mean, you watch him shoot three pointers now. He, he nails them. He knocks them down in practice all the time, and he's just not taking enough shots. I mean, he's he's a guy that needs to step up and start being ready to shoot the basketball. Um, Tamar Bates is, is a very good offensive player, but when he's not playing his best, he's no factor out there because defensively, he's not the best player. I mean, he he I don't want to say he's a liability, but he doesn't seem to play defense at the same level that he likes to play offense. That's got to change. Malik Renew is another guy that is not playing up to his capabilities right now. He's lost confidence. Uh, he's struggling a little bit. His footwork has changed. He doesn't do the same things he did early on. Now, granted, he was he was playing lesser teams, but against Xavier, he played terrific, and he played against two really good bigs there. Uh, he's capable. Um, you, you, there are so many guys in this basketball team, and Geronimo. Jordan Geronimo is the best athlete on this ball club. And he, when he makes a mistake, it's like it, it ruins his game. It ruins the chance for him to play good the rest of the game, it seems like to me. He doesn't fight through it. Uh, these guys have to change their mentality. It's that simple. If they do it, if they will change that mentality and become the, the tougher guy that they need to become, I think they could be just a terrific basketball team. And they can right this ship in a hurry. But right now they're struggling and they're floundering a little bit. And I, I don't know. I know you may not be able to even to answer this, but I, I wonder if with Mike's long experience in the NBA and, and he has a lot of experience around him that is NBA oriented, if it's too much uh, where in, in, in the NBA, the players are more self-motivating. You, you really don't do the rah-rah thing in, 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 at the NBA level. And I'm not sure that there's enough of that going on here. I don't, I hate to use the word rah-rah, but these guys are not getting themselves up. So, uh, I don't know if it, Mike is just not used to having to do that. Uh, what, where, where the the problem lies? But it's somebody's not getting somebody up. It just seems like. Well, he's got a staff. I mean, these guys the, on their staff have all been college basketball coaches. I mean, Brian Walsh is new in that regard, but he's been around uh, college basketball for a long time now. Uh, these college coaches know what it takes in that regard. They they know what the the. the the story is so someplace along the way, the communication, the message is not getting through. And uh, I, I've always said this players want to be the owners of the team. Players should want to be the owners of the team. They're the ones who have to take ownership if it's going to be a good basketball team. And uh, with the exception of a couple of guys in this ball club right now, I don't think the rest of these guys have bought into that thinking process. 
Um, this is a team game, and and I don't think there's anybody on this team that's totally selfish or any of that kind of stuff. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's right here between the ears. It's the toughness factor, the intensity level that you have to play with, understanding that, and maybe that's where the biggest issue is right now is understanding how hard you got to play every time you walk out on the floor.